Sad, sad times. Sad times really need to show a sign of strength. Get that last point of support. Then, of course, this was me uh, earlier <laughs> when uh, price was approaching 29000 I was going for it. All in, backing the truck up. Looking to become one of the many holders. Prepping for uh, an uptrend. Or what Wyckoff would call a markup. You know, as a little, as a barnacle on a whale's tail, I picked up my selling, but I accumulated on net because I felt strongly that we are right here. And soon enough, we'll be crossing the creek. You know, here's a great schematic uh, to help show us where we are and, you know, get us started. I like how it includes volume. It's something uh, that I've been looking out for. And, you know, if you notice that the uh, the Bitcoin uh, crash down to this point was much more uh, severe and steep before it finally leveled out and then started tracing out this path. You know, there were many paths it, it could follow. You know, we, we could, could still see the... Um, cup and handle here but it, it does look like we've got this sort of um but you know it could be a head and sh shoulders uh possibly you know there's a few few outcomes there's other other schematics you know here's a close-up of uh one that's got like a double spring or really a one one true spring and a in a, a test another example uh, and this is the one that, you know, really does look like what we're sort of following. And right now we're kind of seeing a little bit of um, an LPS around here. And before I get too far along, you know, here's another schematic. And, you know, initially we were on this uh, more of a rising gradient uh, type where... Uh, we don't necessarily have have that spring event down near the selling climax and below the uh, test, but we have this, you know, again a rising gradient where we eventually just come up on an SOS and exit, and you can see uh, with this overlay here that we were following that initially. We have eventually broke through that uh, support line and came down. And we moved more into uh, this type of pattern. When we broke broke that support line, we kind of came down here. You know, and somebody uh, somebody put this together. I found this on a uh, on a Weeble chat. Uh, you know, after I've been talking about Wyckoff accumulation for weeks, somebody uh, you know today suddenly everyone's all about it. You know, they they made it work. Uh, really, it should be probably shifted over a little bit because this is the selling climax here. Uh, but, you know, they made it work for the spring. You know, and this is a good point because just because it has this, um, you know, this pattern and it traces it out on a chart and it shows one last uh, point of support, you know, in a single SOS here, uh, there could be multiple of these as uh, price moves through the trading range so that's not they're not singular and again there could be multiple tests um, you know I haven't really seen any research or indication about multiple springs necessarily there should be one true spring because of how it's defined everything else would be a, a secondary test um, but you know generally we get we get kind of this Initial reaction, we come down, we sort of test the lows. What happens is the range goes from being very wide to slightly more narrow. Uh, one way or another, sometimes it's compressed from both ends. Um, you know, other times it's uh, it kind of narrows like this. You know, in this case, we got pretty uh, strong lines in, in the real chart. But this is interesting how closely it's following it. Again, textbook. 
but that really brings us to uh, you know these next these next levels in here like did we do this test of support um, did we have an SOS that this uh, the SOS follows the spring the save in this chart doesn't even list, list that properly um, you know are we seeing an LPS perhaps right now I think we are um, you know we'll see another SOS and then the backup so let's talk a little bit about what all that means all right in some of the other videos I've talked about what a spring is um, you know maybe I should link to that in the description but a sinus strength follows the spring and a sinus strength uh, you know, a quick way to think about it is large green candles, you know, finishing towards the top, not the bottom, but large green candles. The LPS follows the SOS, and like this short write-up says, and I like the way it, it says it, it's really, it's really an attempt, it's really an attempt to drive price down. However, if it if the composite operators cannot drive price down, um, it's a, a sign of uh, demand, right? We're still bullish. And this schematic, you know, does highlight that you're going to see several of these. So again, we're going to have an SOS um, in between all of these last points of support. All right, so let's start talking about what exactly the SOS and LPS mean. So in phase D, this is going to be after the spring, we're going to see price react to that spring, right? It's going to come out strongly. So that was that 28, 8, uh, 4K run up to uh, really, I think it ran up to 32.8 before it came back about by 500. All right, great here right that's our SOS coming out off the spring and then we see this zone where it levels off this tiny SOS another leveling off right so this is our LPS right price it's getting pressure from sellers uh, to hold it down so what are, what are some things that I saw that were going on during this well on coinbase you can see the market uh, depth and you could see the uh, order book and what i did notice on the order book was um you know the spread spread was going up so we're going to look for in green here widening price spread and increased volume followed by smaller spreads and diminished volume let's take a look all right, so this this was our um, spring event circled in yellow. If you notice, there's high volume. Price begins to climb immediately uh, afterwards, right? But volume volume is diminishing, right? So we have our SOS, and then we have our LPS diminish volume but we have support. And here, if we look at a more uh, recent version of the same chart, we see another SOS. We see a uh, volume diminishing as it starts to go up. And if we really look at that further, we'd see it top off again uh, for this last phase. It's currently going on right now. Again, another example. right starting to see the pattern all right here's the um, bid ass spread from today and if you notice uh, it's got this general slope to it so here would have been um, you know our peak peak sell-off here uh, so spread would have been increasing and then we had our SOS and our LPS, and you notice that uh, the spread uh, started to shrink, right? It came down across all, 
all exchanges. So it looks like we're checking boxes. You know, and if we really think about it, this is so true, right? Um, there's different ways, you know, recovering vector candles. There's other ways to say this, but, um, you know, after a sign of strength, so a large run up, there's going to be some form of retracement, profit taking, resistance, um, short selling against it, right? So that last point of support is sort of that, that sideways action, that pullback after that SOS. And we really see that with that in the charts you know so if sellers are really trying to push price down but they they fail to do so right that's the last point of support so what does that look like in the chart all right here we are in the 15 minute we see you know again we come out on our sos start to level off i mean it can't get pushed down what we end up seeing is you know mini SOS I'd like to see a you know a little bit more of a continuation of that but again another another LPS and what we have is testing throughout the range and in each each occasion you know spreads spreads close to a penny here uh spread can anywhere be anywhere between a couple cents to 10 12 dollars I was seeing at times in uh, both of these run-ups and we know from looking at the volume charts that we had solid volume right so we're just we're just holding this here you know and I just want to highlight one thing here before we go any further um, you know whether this is about manipulation or or what doesn't really matter but it's interesting that price was held under 32 6 right and then it slowly came down and here we are, that blue box, blue box right here, that's the New York Open. So that's that's 9.30 uh, a.m. Eastern Time. So that opening bell goes off and, you know, all of a sudden, chaos breaks loose. You know, Monday was that false move, right? Driving it down, setting everybody up, getting the bears all excited, lining those shorts up, you know, getting everyone to sell. Panic sell, panic sell, panic sell, panic sell. Oh my God. Meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out where I can get more money to buy into this because I've been waiting for so long. Uh, it's, it's a shame it didn't didn't happen a week or two from now i could have generated a little more cash but so here we are we got in they drove it down and then tuesday one of the stronger you know heavier volume days of the week right they tried to dump it and it came back um you know 4k in three hours right so it was what 15 percent down came back up um you know, all of that and then some. So, you know, that, that to me is a sign of strength right there on the face of it without even looking at the definition. All right, it's back out to the 30. And where do we go from here? Well, you should expect, you know, some more traps, bull and bear alike, but general consensus uh, from what I'm gathering is we should see SOS followed by LPS, SOS followed by LPS. Eventually, eventually price is going to get up near the top of the trading range and it's going to uh, jump the creek. The creek is, you know, can be visualized in a number of different ways. I've done it with, um, you know, bars uh, boxes on my uh, on my chart you know you could draw it out like this but you know in real rough uh, terms a creek is sort of like connecting the dots if the dots were the highs uh, and continues over and when price jumps the creek it usually has large momentum and it's going to fly over it so sort of like that 4k move we saw out of the bottom, um, 
you know, and again, I, I did this, uh, I created this before we, we saw this action. Uh, that's a little exaggerated, but so this was made before we saw that nip. So jumping it, though, would be what we saw, like, and this be like a 4K move. So like from 39 to 43 or uh, 38 to 42, something like that. 39 to 43 is actually better. Uh, because that would totally clear the TR trading range and allow for that backup move to happen. But let's look into the creek a little bit further. All right, so back, you know, 80, 90 years, uh, right? Boy Scouts were pretty popular. So, um, you know, when you read about Wyckoff and you get back to these stories about the creek or, you know, the boy coming back, rest his feet in there, right, on the backup, there's a lot of these references. So again, the creek is just sort of this um, meandering line at the top of the trading range. And by jumping it, the JC, jump across the creek, um, it's really clearing that upper resistance line with authority. All right, and what it says down here, jump is a relatively wider priced spread move made of Apparently higher volume, so it's like a, it's like an SOS on steroids, and the backup immediately follows that, right? So the backup is sort of, a, you know, a natural reaction to that. Now the risk adverse, like Coffian would buy in on this backup here. They they would they would recognize that as sort of like the last opportunity before price really takes off. Um, you know, the best opportunity would be to buy the spring, of course, the selling climax, but that's almost impossible. You know, that's the catching the falling knife. At least the spring is something you could plan ahead for, man. And I've been waiting, waiting for that to happen. All right. So we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, you know, and again, this entire phase is really just one big test of the market. Uh, designed for those composite operators to accumulate coins to complete their campaign. And their campaign's about making money, right? So tests, tests are always going to be uh, occurring, and they're going to happen all these levels. Every time we go sideways, it's a test. Every time there's uh, a trap, it's a test, right? So what we're looking for at this point is just, uh, you know, that price advancement. You know, we we're saying we had a spring. We saw the SOS. We're looking for the LPS. Don't want price to fall too much further. Another thing to think of, a way to think about an LPS is an LPS is a former um, area of resistance and support, right? So when we flip those and they become support after we clear them, um, you know, those are good signs of LPS. And then they're, they're going to be followed by those SOSs, right? So we've, we've done a pretty good job looking at this. Now we're just going to have to keep following because, again, we want to see one final SOS on steroids, and we're going to see our backup, and then we want to leave the trading range one more time. That will end the accumulation phase. All right, I'll uh, do another video. If you guys, I don't know, if anybody likes this stuff, you know, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, maybe even comment. I don't know, I'll talk about whatever. Uh, as long as it's like Bitcoin related, I'm willing to do it. Or, uh, you know, I'm into some of the other ones, but right now, Bitcoin rules the roost. I'm 75% in the BTC, um, you know, and it, it does, for better or worse, drive the market. So if I'm good at uh, knowing what's going on with Bitcoin, I'm good at the rest of the market, and that's really helped me. All right. Uh, happy trading, guys. Hopefully, hopefully everybody got in on that uh 29k or as close as possible if you've been watching my videos hopefully you set up like i did uh you know i know my buddies were giving me calls and uh jumping in there so uh you know best to everyone cheers